So David, what's become of the Eco Island initiative? Well, it's very much still the strategy for us, the local authority, and also our partners through the Island Strategic Partnership. I mean, it's not just about renewable energy, which I think what some people think, it's about our wider social, environmental, and economic aspirations for the island. So still very much a, a focus and many different things we and our partners are doing. So it is still being actively supported and developed by the council? It is. I mean, as with all these things, um, there's always a bit of a reality check on where we are, and particularly in the current economic climate, what we can still deliver within certain timescales. But in many ways, in the current economic climate, it's even more important because of the, the savings we can actually make for people through, you know, home insulation and so forth, and the contribution that can make to, you know, tightening belts. The aims that are put forward are very ambitious. So is the stated 2020 timescale still realistic? It is. I mean, 10 years is uh, still a long time. A lot can be done. And th we must remember this isn't just about the council or indeed the health authority or all those other partners. This is about businesses as well. And at the launch uh, of the event, we had a number of businesses, Liz Earl, Guret and others, who demonstrated what they're doing. Now, in many ways, their contribution is going to be as big, if not greater, than some of the stuff we're doing. So, you know, we're, we're all in this together. What are the practical steps then being taken um, by the council to turn the idea into reality? I mean, some of the stuff we're doing as a local authority is how we can enable things to happen. So, for example, the new Pan Meadows development, we made a commitment that will be at level for the sustainability code in terms of rainwater harvesting, the quality of build, the materials used. Um, the roads PFI scheme, we put in our bid to government that would use renewable uh, resources in that. The gasification plant, um, some of the work we're doing, we have been doing with government, and obviously things are changing on that front, but it'll be inter interesting to see what comes forward on renewable energy projects, particularly uh, tidal, offshore wind and so forth. So there's many things behind the scenes that I suppose one of the frustrations is all this stuff can't come to fruition sometimes as quickly as you would like. How important is the Eco Island vision to the island's future, do you think? I mean, it's very important in terms of the contribution it can make to us reducing the carbon footprint, placing a greater reliance on renewable energy. I mean, we are a defined, distinct community here on the island, and if we can make something like this work anywhere, it should be here. Uh, I think one of the difficulties is, is that some of the potential decisions we have to take, such as on renewable energy, will be contentious by their very nature. And we've seen that with some of the turbine applications, and there's another one uh, coming forward now. I think, you know, sooner or later we probably will see some onshore wind on the island. I suppose the question is, on what scale and where's it going to be? Mm. Uh, do you have any sort of feel for a time scale on, on when we might um, see a, a development going forward? Well, a lot of it will depend on national planning policies and what you know the next government actually mm. puts into place. Um, the, the Conservatives nationally have talked of incentivising people to support turbines locally uh, through actually them getting a, a take of the, the money generated from it. And um, there's also you know, policies from the outgoing Labour government uh, around actually changing the, the national planning policies to make it easier for applications to go through. So I think we'll watch nationally with much interest because much of it is regulated by national planning policies and the incentives put in place. Mm. Now a lot of people we've talked to, uh, you know, a lot of businesses on the island are pushing forwards with um, you know, making their own businesses more environmentally friendly, but also with, with uh, new products, new ideas for renewable energies. Um, they all talk about Eco Island, mm. but you know, is there one, one person, one place within the council that people can go to to um, sort of buy into this vision? Well, they can come and talk to our sustainability officer, they can talk to you know, the leadership of the council, because in many ways this stretches right across what we do and also what our, our partners do. So uh, if it's something to do with housing, it would be our housing department. If it's something to do with planning generally, there's the planning and, uh, and so forth. Even education and our schools are getting involved in some of this. One of our middle schools has got an application through for, for turbines on their side. So we, it's, it stretches right across and everyone's kind of involved with that and signed up to it. Doesn't there really need to be a sort of one one person who is the um, the hub for the vision that's um, and pulls these things together and communicates the idea to the wider audience? Well, we, we do have that through the Island Strategic Partnership because it's worth stressing this isn't just about the local authority but our partners as well. Um, I chair that body in terms of setting out you know where we're going and we're having a meeting with our partners in July to kind of refresh where we are uh, on this. But you know we do have some key contacts on that and people can you know make contact with me in the first instance or some of my colleagues. And how are you going to communicate the idea? 
in many ways, um, we don't need to push that message massively strongly from the front because the businesses are leading on it, um, the local authority will play its part, and through the county press and the green supplement, you know, they do from time to time, it kind of pulls all that together. Clearly there's a role for leadership and that's where we, as the democratically elected council, come in. But you know, people don't need to wait for our lead. They can, as they've demonstrated, mm. get on with these things themselves. Mm. I, I recognise there's probably more we can do. I mean, we could do with updating the website, putting more info about what some of these businesses are doing. On we need to celebrate some of the success there's been on this project, and you know, show how this has been put mm. into practice. Do you think the island, through Eco Island, can uh, lead the rest of the country towards a more sustainable future? I think the island is well placed to lead on this. Clearly, you know, we'd be the first to admit there's a lot more still for us to do. Uh, and we need to respond to that and really set the agenda. But one of the interesting things for, for that context will be what we get from national government over the coming months in terms of what incentives, what policies they bring into place and what opportunities they provide for local authorities to lead on some of these projects at a local level. But no, we certainly can. We're a distinct, defined island community and if anywhere can, the Isle of Wight can. Already down Stag Lane we have the Vestas Research and Development Facility which despite the difficult news from last year over their production plant we're going to be the centre of high tech development of turbine blades um, that will be done here on the island with the skill base we already have and that will be based right on the waterfront there. Next door to that site on the former landfill site we've uh, made an initial decision to allocate that land to, to a bidder who came forward um, specifically for renewable energy projects on that site uh, to, to have a biomass project where we can generate energy uh, from waste and actually look at using our resources to actually uh, fuel uh, businesses and the public sector and private sector hopefully on the island which is you know one of the things we'll be well placed to do but a lot more work still to do um, but hopefully that will make a major contribution to our carbon footprint reduction. I mean, the Eco Island brand, um, for want of a better word, mm. is that something that we can use more widely, for instance, in promoting tourism? I think so. I mean, some of the work we're already doing as a council in supporting the walking and cycling festivals is about encouraging people to come over here, not bring cars, actually take part in outdoor activities, enjoy the, enjoy the outdoors of the island, mm. uh, and actually go for a, you know, a greener type of tourism. And you only have to look at some of our hotels and providers around the island, so they're already embracing that and, you know, providing that as a kind of niche market and a focus for attracting people to the island. So in summary you'd say that the Eco Island is an initiative that's alive and well and uh, is going to go forward? It is alive and well. We as the council will be the first to admit there's a lot more still to do and it's understandable you know people do become uh, cynical about this from time to time and I think we need to demonstrate uh, even greater leadership in taking this forward and actually driving the, the renewable side. I think what is frustrating is when there is a lot of work taking place behind the scenes as we know there is and we can't shout about them as much as we'd like to um, but what I'd say is watch this space and the next few months could prove to be quite interesting indeed.